Hello everyone. Welcome back to the session. My name is Somajit Goswami and in this session typically I'm looking at the reading comprehension. This these uh, you know comprehension passages are actually taken from Angad Singh's uh, work quite a few years ago he started you know building his own content at one of the institutes I will not name it it's an online institute but I don't have the actual recording of his lectures but I have the PDF so I'll be making use of those PDFs and I'll be hoping that you understand my explanation if I get uh, his uh, explanations I'll try and upload that as well but for the time being let's just you know delve into it there is a word of caution that I would like to tell you all before I start with the explanation is that this passage is actual cat passage this is a cat 2007 passage a difficult passage so I am hoping that you guys will learn a lot about comprehension just by reading it okay so just see how I would go about you know solving this passage and see if you can uh, you know if your thoughts are in tandem with my thoughts if you want to look at the passage itself the questions itself you can possibly do a google search it's actual cat 2007 passage let me write it also over there so it is cat 2007 passage you can search it in the internet you will get the passage you will get the questions you will get the answers also but then see if my explanation my comprehension helps you let's start the session the first para I'll read a little, uh, you know, fast so that I understand the lines clearly in my head and then I'll break it down for you. Every civilized society lives and thrives on a silent but profound agreement as to what is to be accepted as a valid mold of experience. Civilizations is a complex system of dam, dike, canal, warding off, directing and articulating the influx of surrounding fluids element. A, f a fertile fenland, elaborately drained and protected from the high tides of chaotic unexercised and inarticulate experiences so the very first line itself tells me that there is a commonality between the civilization or the civilized society that you know lives and thrives on an agreement which is accepted as a mold of experience okay now so many ideas typically the only highlighting idea is that a civilization or a civilized society has a silent agreement that is accepted for a mold of experience for a you know accepted as a valid mold of experiences civilization you know ward off the inarticulate experience the unexercised or the chaotic experiences also now in such a culture stable and sure of itself within the frontiers within in the frontiers of naturalized experience the art the arts it is not art it is arts Will their creative power not so much in width as in depth they do not create new experiences they but deeply deepen and purify the old their work do not differ from one another like new horizon from a new horizon but like a madonna from a madonna the, this is a very interesting line that their work do not differ one another like a new horizon from a new horizon but like a madonna from a madonna okay if you understand what, where i am going the periods of art which is which are most vigorous and creative passion seem to occur when established pattern of experience established pattern of experience loosen its rigidity without as yet losing its force so i am you know bending a little bit such a period was the renaissance and the shakespeare it and shakespeare its poetic consummation then it was as though the discipline of the old order gave depth to the excitement of the breaking away the depth of job and tragedy of incomparable conquest of irredeemable losses adventurers of experience adventurer of experience set out as though in lifeboat to rescue and bring back to the shore treasures of knowing who are these adventurers of experience we don't know but we know for a fact that they set out on their lifeboats to bring back to the shore treasures of knowing and feelings which the old order had left floating on the sea so basically they are extrapolating polluting on the ideas that the old order has left the works of the works of early renaissance and the poetry of shakespeare vibrates with the compassion for live experience in danger of dying from exposure and neglect 
I have no idea what this line said. In this, compassion was a creative genius of the age. Yet it was genius of courage, not of desperate audacity. One thing that I can understand is that Renaissance and Shakespeare was just extrapolating on the ideas that were already floating an, around. However, for however elusively it elusively it is it still news new of harbors and anchors of home to which to return and of barns in which the store the harvest exploring spirit of art in the depth of its consciousness the exploring spirit of art was in the depth of its consciousness still aware of a scheme of things into which into which to fit its exploits of cre and creation now if you understand now i'll remove everything if you understand this is a poetic passage okay the prose is you know hidden in such a way that it becomes poetry almost now let's read these lines but the more the scheme of things loses its stability the more boundless and uncharted appears the ocean of potential exploration what have they said that the scheme of things loses its stability i don't know what i need to bring back okay because there is a potential uh, you know vastness in front of me the more boundless and uncharted boundless and uncharted appear the ocean of potential exploration in the blank confusion of infinite possibility potentialities float sum of significance gets attached to the jet sum of experience now if you understood this line float sum of significance gets attached to the jet sum of experience i have no idea what this means but you know somewhere the significance is getting lost in a sea of experience i can probably you know understand it in that sense for everything is sea everything is at sea it is 100% poetic passage so you don't really need to worry too much let's read the poem i mean the uh, the lines of the poem itself by the t s eliot the sea is all about us the sea is a land's edge also the granite into which it reaches the beaches where it tosses it hints of clear and other early sorry it hints of earlier and other creations they are just explaining the idea of this sea what the sea is now the final para and i hope that this make this will make some sense and rilk tells a story in which t s eliot's poem it is again the sea and the distance of other creation sea and the distance of other creation that becomes the image of poet's reality a rowing boat sets out on a difficult passage the oarsman now do we know what an oarsman is ye jo chappu chalate hain they are the oarsmen the oarsmen labor in exact rhythm there is no sign yet of destination suddenly a man seemingly idle breaks out to into song people are doing you know their labor but the boat is seeing no destination and suddenly then there you know there is this idle person who is sitting like idle and you know starts to sing and if the labor of the oarsman meaninglessly defeats the real resistance of the real waves it is the idle single i think you know this line should have been singer it is the idle singer who magically conquers the despair of apparent aimlessness while the people next to him try to conquer the grips with the elements that is next to him his voice seems to bind the boat to the farthest distance so that the farthest distance draw it towards itself so basically what this singer now thinks this you know this idle man this man that if i sing so maybe you know this is suppose this is my boat okay this is my boat and i am here singing so i am hoping that you know i can see the i i have no destination i have nothing but the farthest that i can see i know for a fact i'm hoping that the farthest the distance draw this far this will also you know draw this thing towards itself okay so this is a sort of an mental imagery that i have ki this is a poem what will you make out of it okay so i'll have to read it again i just forgot what i was saying so while people next to him trying to come to grips with the element that is next to them his voice seems to be bind to the boat to the farthest distance so that the farthest distance draw it towards himself basically the other people are saying ki bhai koi aur chhor mil nahi raha let's go back because you know 
it just the ocean doesn't seem to end but this fellow okay our you know singer he's saying ki nahi nahi farthest is also pulling me or pulling us toward itself the farthest we go the farthest will pull us toward itself so this is the meaning that literal meaning or metaphorical meaning that you can draw i don't know why and how is rilke's conclusion but suddenly i understood the situation of the poet his place and function in this age it does not matter if one denies him every place except this one there one must tolerate him okay so yeah there one must tolerate him mota mota we've understood what this passage is all about a very interesting passage i would have read it you know more uh, you can say in a very i've read it really fast uh, for the fact that i thought that i'll not read it that fast but then i would have read it very slow and i would have gone to each and every line try to decipher it this is what comprehension does but you know let's look into the question in the pass in the passage the expression like a madonna from a madonna alludes to first of all you need to know the meaning of this uh, alludes okay only if you know the meaning of alludes you can uh, answer the question correctly but then i would still say that you know attempt the question see if i mean see either you will be getting the synonym or the antonym you will either ways you will know what alludes mean okay i will not get into the details of explaining what allude is so much as to let's just go back to the passage and try and understand what this is okay just a second so i'll take you back to the passage itself like a madonna from a madonna this is actually talking about you know in this culture in such a culture in which you know the civilization is protecting the influx of the unexercised and inarticulate experiences we are talking about the arts wield the power so much in width and depth such that they do not create new experiences but deepens and purify the old so in a way or the other is it not we are, is it not that we are saying that renaissance and shakespeare did not do something new they just deepen and purify the already existing ideas their work do not differ from one another like a new horizon from a new horizon but like a madonna from a madonna so although we don't know in what context you know they are using this word like a madonna from a madonna but i know for a fact that i can answer this question now because i have the idea with me so let's go to the you know question itself let's read the options the first option says the difference arising as a consequence of artistic license okay I, i'll keep it the difference between two artistic interpretations now this is a very interesting line because when we say that you know this art that was there during that you know civilizational process in such a society the civilization that guards of those you know inarticulate ideas in that a society arts basically you know deepens and purify already existing uh, you know already existing order so in a way or the other you can say that it is you know the like a madonna from a madonna is an difference in two artistic interpretations okay i i like this one i like this one from this one the difference arising as a consequence of artistic license what sort of a license what artistic license we are not talking about any license maybe an artistic interpretations you can see okay so i just forgot what they said from a horizon to a horizon and then from a madonna like a madonna from a madonna okay so this one seems uh practical so i'll keep it for the time being let's read ahead the difference between life and interpretation of life nowhere maybe if they have given you art in this in the uh, you know this thing interpretation of art and between uh, art and the interpretation of art 
maybe i would have become a little confused but not now because it is not it has got nothing to do with life and the interpretation of life goes away the difference between width and depth of the creative power definitely not is is just one aspect of that passage the difference between the legendary character and a modern day singer now see this is again extrapolating we know what um, you know I, we don't know who madonna is and we don't really need to know who madonna is also so this is extrapolating and typically i know that we don't extrapolate so for all practical purposes this you know the difference between two artistic interpretation is my pick although if you are somebody who would pick the difference arising as a consequence of artistic license i would say then you need to read a little further because no a cannot be the answer All right, let's see. Just a second. Let's see which one is the correct answer. Yeah, so this is the correct answer. The difference between two artistic interpretations. Now let's quickly solve the other questions because I think. the c and the other creations lead zril to now this is there in the last line if i am not mistaken and i had to read a lot uh, while i was actually trying to answer this question now i'll have to take you there okay c um c and the other creations actually it is there but you थोड़ा पीछे जाना पड़ेगा आई कैनॉट स्टार्ट फ्रॉम दिस पैसेज इट सेल्फ बिकॉज इल मेक नो सेंस यू हैव टू गो बैक अ लिटिल बट सो इफ यू इफ यू रीड फ्रॉम लेट से वेर इज इट या एडवेंचर ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस इफ यू रेड यू नो दे वेंट टू देयर लाइफ बोट्स दे वेंट टू देयर लाइफ बोट्स टू रेस्क्यू एंड ब्रिंग बैक the treasures of knowledge and feeling which the old order had left floating in the high seas from here the sea come into the picture but the problem is this scheme more this scheme of things loses its stability the more boundless and uncharted appear the ocean and ocean of potential exploration so i can totally understand that you know the renaissance guys and shakespeare would want to go out on their boats to explore for potential you know treasures of knowledge or feeling but then if it loses its stability then there is a possibility that you know these guys will get lost in the blank confusion of infinite potentialities float some of significance gets attached to the jetsam of experience for everything is sea everything is at sea and then you know this idea comes into the picture you can read the entire line but now i'll straight away go to this uh, part which says that i don't know why and how rilk's conclusion but suddenly i understood the situation of the poet in his place and function in this age it does not matter if one denies him every place except this one there must one tolerate him see who are we talking about we are talking about that singer it is written single over here but i am referring it to as the singer the ideal the idol fellow who was sitting like anything you know people around him the oarsmen were doing the labor and they could understand that the you know there is infinite possibilities and they are going nowhere but the singer suddenly you know stood up and started singing ki take me to the farthest jitna dur le jana hai le jao kyunki the more i go to the farthest the more the farther farthest also you know uh, attracts me towards itself so one thing or the other these guys can even say that you know he was a madman or something but i think i have the idea clear in my head so i'll just see the options now the c and the other creation okay so i'll have to again look at the other creation what is the other creation the sea is all about us the sea is the land's edge the granite in which it reaches and this and that it hints of earlier and other creation okay let's read right the sea and the other creation leads rilk to define the place of the poet in his culture actually if you realize rilk has given in 
द कंक्लूजन दैट यू नो देयर इज अ प्लेस ही कुड नॉट यू नो अंडरस्टैंड इट इट डज नॉट मैटर इफ वन डिनाइज हिम एवरी प्लेस एक्सेप्ट दिस वन देयर मस्ट वन टॉलरेट हिम ओके सो द सी एन अदर क्रिएशन रिल्क का कंक्लूजन विल बी दैट डिफाइन अ प्लेस ऑफ द पोएट इन हिज कल्चर नाउ दिस एक्चुअली फिट्स द बिल बट आई हैव टू रीड द अदर्स एज वेल सो लेट्स रीड द अदर्स रिफ्लेक्ट ऑन द रोल्स ऑफ ओर्समैन एंड द सिंगर is this because you know this c and the other creation is coming into the picture because you know rilk is reflecting on the role of the oarsman no the oarsman were a bit fed up with the singer but not the other way around so i would not pick this one muse on the artistic labor and its main uh, aim lessons no he is not musing on anything musing is not, you know rilk is not musing on anything he is just giving a conclusion understand the element that one has to deal with there is one person you know the, again the boat analogy and then there are oarsmen who are you know chappu chala rahe jo there are in the ocean infinite possibilities and he can see there is no shore but this guy still says take me to the further take me to the farthest because the farthest is also you know taking him or rather attracting him towards itself i know it seems really uh, nonsensical for this fellow uh, rather for these fellows but for this one it may have made some sense so i mean this is what rilk says if you read again it does not matter if one denies him every place except this one there must there one must tolerate him to so, aap use deny kar sakte ho but aapko tolerate karna padega usko theek hai so with that being said the no i'm not very confident with this one delve into natural experience and real waves no definitely not so i have eliminated oarsman and singer understand the elements that one has to deal with one has to deal with what elements what elements a vague option so i would go with this one the place of the poet in his culture definitely i mean this is from my understanding the last one and this is the answer also the last one according to the passage the adventurers of the experience refers to I don't have to go to the passage let me see the options first poets and artists who are driven by courage what sort of courage poets and artists who create their own genres is this passage has is this passage anything to do with genre or anything we are ex, you know we are talking about shakespeare but not to you know predict any genre so no poets and artists of the renaissance adventurers of experience are yes poets and artist of renaissance is a very good you know line so i'll keep it for the time being poets and artists who revitalize and enrich the past for us oh wow now if you see adventurers of the experience are these fellows who go into the sea na he is the fellow who is sitting in that boat and he is going into that ocean he has the courage he i can get lost because the there is infinite vastness there is no uh, you know there is no predictable shore this is what the adventurers of the experience do they are poets and artists who revitalizes and en enriches the past for us they take the you know uh, what do i call this the knowledge and the feelings i can actually go to the passage and i, I can show you this thing these are the ones right knowing the feelings of the old order had left floating on the high seas so this was a very good you know this thing let's go back so definitely you know this is a good one poet and artist who delve into flotsam and jetsam of seas no definitely not away in easy elimination easy elimination easy elimination poets and artists of renaissance yes true this one is a true uh, statement but again this is too limited in its scope we are talking about adventurers according to the passage the adventurers of experiences refers to those who revitalize and enrich the past for us so 
this is the best option for my take. Let me see which one they have given as the answer. Yep. So artists, poets and artists who revitalizes this thing. All right. So this was a good, uh, you know, reading comprehension passage. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.